Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your Saturn special horoscope. Looking at Saturn moving through the sign of Aquarius for the better part of the coming three years, March 2020 right to March 2023 is what we will be talking about now. Thank you so much for being here and be sure to stay tuned to the end for your preview horoscopes for each and every sign where I talk about what it is that Saturn moving into the sign of Aquarius will mean for you and your sign. And you can access the full video uh, by logging into the superstar space on my website or by download at NadiaShaw.com. As I am beginning to record this video, um, there's a lot going on in the world right now. And I want to talk about what's happening in the immediacy, certainly, but also in terms of the larger implications, because this really is an important turning point for us as a collective. And because we as individuals are part of the collective, we individually will be feeling a shift as well. There are times when we move into an energy and we ease into it. And then there are times when the universe makes it very clear we are in brand new waters. And in this case, the brand new airy waters of Aquarius are being highlighted here and we will be right in it right away. And so some of the things that are happening now as I'm recording this video is of course, the fear and the uncertainty because of COVID-19. And it is strangely a unifying force for us. It is reminding us of our interconnection to each other, to everyone and everything, the seemingly invisible ways in which we are reliant on each other. And what is that reliance? really come down to? Well, my belief is, is that it comes down to love, the desire to be loved and our love for each other. But the energy of Aquarius is rather impersonal. It is loving in its own way. But there's a reason why the energy of Aquarius is thought to be detached. Think about this. The sign of Aquarius is what we call fixed air. So fixed signs take place in the middle of a season. And each element gets its own modality, the part of the season that it's in. And in this case, we have air having to do with thoughts and mind. And being in the middle of a season, in the middle of winter, it is holding steady. It takes on a greater purity, a greater wholeness to it. And as I was preparing for this video, I was thinking about how Aquarius is also an energy that correlates to freedom and how it is one of these universal things we know about ourselves, whether it is philosophers or spiritual teachers who have reminded us that it is in our thoughts that we are free. In fact, it can be said that our thoughts are the only place where we truly are free. There can be so many other external limitations placed on us, but within our own minds, within our mind's eye, we really can take flight. We can be where it is that we desire. We can go where it is that we desire. And we can think what it is that we want, free from the judgment of others. Speaking is a whole other thing. It takes on a whole other energy. But when air is pure, it stays in the realm of thought. And that is where freedom lies. At the same time, though, there's something very individual about thought. It is inherently private. It is inherently deeply personal. We need to actually find ways to communicate it for it to become a more sharing experience. But until we speak or until we write, until in some way we put it out there in the world, our thoughts remain only for us. And so it's interesting that the energy of Aquarius, while it is an energy that has that sense of freedom and oneness and a very core of individuality, it is also an energy of community. It is an energy of connection, of being connected to each other, of communal activities. 
And I think that this is because it is Aquarius energy that's different than Piscean energy. Because when we think about Piscean energy, we think of compassion, right? We think of wholeness and oneness that is more about how it is that we merge with each other. We meld together that as a humanity, as a planet, as a universe, ultimately, like the name applies, universe, we are one. But with Aquarius, it isn't so much about the sense of wholeness, but rather how it is that individuals and individual energies and different ideas, how it is that they ultimately come together. It is the joining of the individuals that is highlighted here that speaks to community. And where it is that we think of Aquarian energy as as eccentric, right? I do think that the reason this energy cares about the community is because it cares about itself. You know, everybody should be able to be themselves because I want to be myself. I have a right to be me and therefore we're all going to have a right to be ourselves and whoever it is that you are out in the world. And in this way, we become united. It goes to that idea that we are all special, but none of us is special because we are all the same in that we are each of us special. And so in its own way, Aquarius recognizes the specialness of each one of us, what it is that only we individually uniquely bring. But then all of us are the same in that uniqueness, and that can be the uniting factor. But when we think about it from a cultural perspective, the energy of Aquarius is, uh, you know, I think about the age of Aquarius, this idea of um, uh, how everyone will live as one, right? Which is a beautiful concept. And that may be one way that people may choose to access this energy. But I'm reminded of uh, an essay I read many years ago that had a huge impression on me. And it is uh, a work, actually, by Carl Jung called Eon. And even though this was written way back in 1951, it is in this collected uh, works of Carl Jung that he talks about how it is that people are already talking about the age of Aquarius. Like, they're looking forward to this. We know that this uh, dawning, as they call it, the dawning of the age of Aquarius, that we were already on that precipice way back in the early 50s. He speaks about the age of Aquarius in the context of the age of Pisces. And if you look at the glyph of Pisces, much like the glyph of Aquarius, there is this strong sense of mirroring that happens there. However, with Pisces, there's a line that connects them. It looks like two crescents connected by a line, sort of like an H. And so even though there is that duality to it, there's still a connection. And what we saw during the age of Pisces was the sense of the uh, what we call Christ consciousness, what we call uh, Buddha energy, right? This idea of compassion and the oneness and the bliss of the divine. But it has a flip side as well, right? It had the idea of false prophets, the idea of delusion, the idea of hope leading to loss. As much as faith can strengthen us, connect us to what really matters, it is faith that doesn't question itself, that is not healthy. Faith is healthy when it questions itself. And that understanding came from a friend of mine, Michael Barwick, a brilliant astrologer. In the age of Pisces, there were moments when we were asked not to question our faith for it to be strong. But at the same time, when faith isn't questioned, it becomes decidedly unhealthy. And we have seen this collectively and, and culturally. People who through faith end up doing things that are uh, decidedly destructive to themselves or to others. 
The people who don't question their faith create pain in the world. But in its higher understanding, the energy of Pisces is one of compassion and love and easing pain. It is one of healing. So now we come to the energy of Aquarius. And like Pisces, it has a strong duality to it as well. And it is this duality that is evoked in its glyph. It's two waves. They mirror each other. They are identical. And they don't touch each other. And so... In the same way that the energy of Aquarius can be about community, it is also highly individualistic. We think of the energy of Aquarius as connected to technology, and it absolutely is. You think about the digital sphere. That is all air. It is all concept and electricity and thought that comes together to create a reality that we see on our computers and in our media. But at the same time, it's not real, right? Yes, the digital sphere, what we see on, on our computer screens and on our phones, it feels and, and seems like a very real experience, but it is virtual in its very nature. And where it is that the energy of Aquarius is about being interconnected, right? The World Wide Web. I said recently in one of my weekly videos, I think it is incredible. It is a, a very strong statement of what we believe about ourselves as human beings, what we believe about our consciousness, that we manifested the internet. The fact that the internet exists, that connects the world to each other, that eliminates borders and boundaries, allows us to connect and communicate and know and to be present with people where all of those boundaries just wash away. In our own homes, in the privacy of our own spaces, we are actually plugged into the entire world and yet we are isolated. This is all very Aquarian. And so just like with Aquarius, it is about technology and especially where technologies integrate us. It is also the energy of Aquarius that is about living off the grid, living in isolation. But finding comfort knowing that there are others in the same place and in the same boat. It's that part of us that wants to be ourselves no matter what, and therefore will allow others to be themselves. And whether they're doing that together or out on their own, it's okay. And so, as I'm recording this video right now, there is, of course, COVID-19, and that is very much on the surface for a lot of people. It is painful to see us being asked to go into isolation because we are aware of our interconnection to each other. Some of this, the, the health aspect to it, the fact that this is all coming together, well, this speaks more to uh, some of the other energies playing out in 2020 specifically. I'm thinking about the dance that Jupiter will continue to do with Pluto throughout most of 2020. I'm thinking about the fact that as we have Saturn preparing to go into the sign of Aquarius, Mercury has moved back into Pisces. And Pisces certainly as an energy speaks to that sense of the unseen, that dissolving quality that viruses can indicate. And so more and more of us in the world are being asked to think of each other and to be on our own and yet be connected. It is as if there are restrictions being placed on our ability to connect with others, and yet it is done so that we can be cognizant of the fact that we are connected. And so this is very fitting for the energy of Saturn. One of the key words we think of, like, you know, basic cookbook astrology, as it's called, one of the key words we think of is, with Saturn, is restriction. The way in which it holds us back the way in which it asks us to honor things from a more, whether it's traditional perspective, 
or honor things in terms of how they have been done, what has come before. And so the very nature of Saturn is independent, and especially as it moves into its other home sign of Aquarius. It's leaving one of its home signs and moving into Aquarius where Saturn is the traditional ruler of this sign. And so this is where Saturn is able to be more scientific. It is able to amplify that part of us that is not only about mind, but also about understanding how private our thoughts can be. And when it is that we're putting ideas together, there's something inherently, on the one hand, creative about that, but also deeply personal about that. And yet we can share that journey and we can be better for sharing that creative journey together. So the very nature of Saturn being one of restriction, we are being asked, more of us on the planet are being asked to restrict ourselves from each other. This to me is social distancing, right? That's the key word that's coming up as we are in the middle of March of 2020. Now, when I said that we would step into the energy of Saturn and Aquarius and we would be in it right away, that is because of Mars. So on the 22nd of March is when, for most it'll be the 22nd, it might be right around the 21st for some people out there, depending on where you are on the planet. Well, that is when Saturn moves into the sign of Aquarius officially and will be here until July 1st before retrograding back into Capricorn, kind of wrap things up there with those larger themes that I already spoke about in the Saturn and Capricorn special horoscope. You can see that on online. And then it will be in the middle of December that Saturn will return to the sign of Aquarius for a much longer stay. Now that'll be a different energy when we get there. So I'll talk about that in just a moment, but let's talk about this first energy. March 22nd, Saturn moves into the sign of Aquarius. We're already feeling this coming, right? As a collective, as we're being asked to distance ourselves from each other, we're being asked to work from home. More and more people, which relies on the internet, which relies on being interconnected, maintaining those connections to others and yet being separate, yet being individuals and, and individualistic to be with ourselves and to find a sense of stillness and maybe even find a creative spark within that. So then we move forward and it is going to be at the end of March that Mars moves into the sign of Aquarius and immediately connects with Saturn on the 31st of March. This is a powerful connection. These two planets get together about once every two years or so. And when they do get together, for some, this is a stark moment, rooted normally in honesty, seeing things in a bare, and fundamental and essential way. But I also think of this energy as associated with individuality and sacrifice. Both of these energies are highly individualistic, Mars and Saturn by their very nature. Saturn and Aquarius, the independence of thought and the way that thoughts work together in your mind. And then we have Mars, which in and of itself, if you look at the glyph of Mars, it speaks powerfully to the individual. The glyph of Mars has the circle of wholeness, right? That is the individual, that is a containment, you being a contained being in and of yourself. And the arrow that emerges from Mars is acting from that place of wholeness. In its higher understanding, it is a place of self-knowledge. But again, it is on its own. What you feel, what you're feeling about who you are, what your truth is, that is a deeply personal and deeply individual thing. And so how is that now going to shape your behavior? 
And Saturn having to do with sacrifice. It is a planet that speaks to the archetype of sacrifice, knowing what's worth sacrificing for, understanding the long-term picture, understanding the consequences of your actions. Understanding that when you sacrifice now, there can be greater rewards in the fullness of time. But Mars has a lot of immediacy to it. It's impulsive as an energy. And so these two planets get together and it asks us to direct our impulsiveness, our truth, our sense of self consciously, to direct our minds consciously and to understand viscerally, because Mars is a very visceral energy, to understand to the core of our being what is worth sacrificing for and what sacrifices we're going to make so that we can be ourselves, true to ourselves, but also for the collective and for each other. So it is as Mars and Saturn meet that they activate each other's energies. They magnify each other's energies that much more. But this is also a sense of detachment, a removal of emotion from a situation. This is looking at things rationally and directing the impulse towards that more rational way of understanding. Now, what rationality means, also highly personal, highly individualistic. But this is going to be an important moment. It, it's almost as if it is pure in its Aquarian understanding in showing us the duality, on the one hand, of what the Aquarian archetype represents, but also helping us to distill, to get to the essence of it and to take action to support it. So this is going to be important for a few reasons, not only because we will very quickly fully be in this jacked up Saturnian energy. It is uh, Mars that, that connects with the planet and, and brings steroids basically, right? It heightens the energy that much more. But with Saturn, there's restriction there. So the more impulsive quality of Mars is going to be held back. But this is important for another reason, that uh, when I look at it from a bigger perspective, from a larger context, I actually think that it is this moment as we get to the end of March and as April is beginning, this is going to be one of the clearer insights into what is coming up later this decade. Incredibly important, momentous move of Pluto moving into the sign of Aquarius. And it is that energy that is going to be evoked at this time. It is said that Mars is the lower vibration of Pluto. Pluto is the higher vibration of Mars. And the fact that Mars is connecting with Saturn, both Mars and Saturn are what the ancients called Malefics. And so I know I'm very careful with language. Uh, just stay with me here for a second. So the ancients conceptualized the planets in different ways. There are all kinds of ways of understanding the planets. We look at benefics and malefics as one way of understanding the planet. So specifically, I'm thinking of Venus and Jupiter. And Venus is a lower benefic, Jupiter is a higher benefic. Of course, to the ancients, the sky only went as far as Saturn. It wasn't until the discovery of Uranus in 1781 that the universe expanded to include uh, the modern planets or the outer planets as we call them. Up until then, as part of our human experience and our astrological experience, it was Saturn that was the limits of the sky. And in this way now we can see how Saturn is an archetype of limits and Uranus is breaking free of limits. Uranus is the modern ruling planet of Aquarius. And of course Saturn is the ancient ruling planet of Aquarius, as I said earlier. And so we have these benefics, right, of Venus and Jupiter. And then we have 
the malefics and where the benefics tend to bring blessings. It is the malefics that can speak to challenges. Mars is a lower malefic, so less of a challenge, and Saturn is a higher malefic, so a higher challenge. So these two planets are getting together, and then, you know, the outer planets are discovered, and they take on their own understanding as we, as humanity, and as human beings understand ourselves more expansively, of course we're going to discover more planets that will speak to that new understanding, those new ways that we come to know ourselves. But we can say that even outside of the context of the ancients, when we think about Pluto, Pluto is a heavy-duty energy, right? Now, of course, the ancients, they gave us their wisdom, and they gave us this understanding of lower and higher benefics and lower and higher malefics, but Pluto... Many astrologers would say that that can be a challenging energy. As with all energies, though, just like we discovered these outer planets and it represents the ways in which we understand ourselves and our power differently in a new way, so too can we understand the ancient sky. So too can we understand what we call benefics or malefics differently, more expansively, and understand them in a way that ultimately can be a force of empowerment. But I do think that a lot of us are going to want to pay attention to Mars meeting Saturn. Because this is one of the brief glimpses we're going to have. Possibly uh, a glimpse into the larger mystery. However fleeting it may be. Into what Pluto in Aquarius is going to be like for us as a collective. And so Pluto... We'll be moving in and out of the sign of Aquarius in 2023 and in 2024 we'll move into the sign of Aquarius. Nice long transit of 20 years. So we're going to have lots of time to look at that and I already spoke about that in the decade ahead video so you might want to have a look at that. I spoke about some of these things uh, that I'm talking about now but of course I'm expanding it now. So you might want to have a look at that. I'll try to link to that below. So, it is going to be this moment that is not only about this moment of Mars meeting Saturn and how that fits into where we are right now in terms of COVID-19, in terms of our understanding of humanity, in terms of our understanding of our connection to each other and how we utilize technology, how technology allows us to be not only more of ourselves, but to be more on our own, which is another way of being ourselves. But it will also point the way to very clearly what different ways of understanding the age of Aquarius could be for us. And so with the Aquarian energy, going back to Carl Jung, because he talked about the duality, and what I find really interesting with uh, the Aquarian energy is that it does on one hand speak to inner authority and that's why it has a connection to the New Age movement. Even though when we look at the New Age movement when that happened, when that really arose as a cultural force that was the discovery of Neptune. But it is the Aquarian energy that sets the stage for that, the discovery of Uranus that sets the stage for that because it relies on inner authority, right? If you believe the divine is within you, that's basically inner authority. That self-trust that that involves. And I think that that is part of why astrology for some is seen as an Aquarian endeavor. Astrology just is. The sky just is, right? You bring yourself to the sky and it is going to be uh, whatever it is that it, you need it to be. You can't have astrology without the astrologer. When you hear an interpretation of an astrologer, what you're hearing is what they believe. That's it. What their worldview is, their philosophies, what they believe about themselves, what they believe about the inherent nature of people. That's what they reveal to you. Because the sky just is. It's the interpretation that allows astrology to be. And so different astrologies 
and different astrologers will approach the sky and their astrological practice in different ways, and many will approach it from an Aquarian space, where it comes to that sense of inner authority and self-trust and, and bringing art into it, but also having that connection to um, its scientific roots. But the Aquarian energy is also connected to atheism. I mean, I think about, for example, the philosophies of Ayn Rand. If anybody, you know, was a voice of the Aquarian age, we don't often think of it that way. But Ayn Rand, very strong Aquarian energy playing out there with her philosophy of objectivism and individualism. The hyper-materialism is indicated with Aquarian energy. And so what I find interesting as a sort of a, a cultural uh, thing that's happening right now is part of us isolating. Well, it involves us not gathering, and that means one of the spaces, the community spaces where communities come together most readily tend to be in places of worship. And it is these very spaces that now are uh, going digital, right? They're, they're whatever you call it, televising, telecalling, Zooming, right? That's what they're doing now. And so people are united in that they are sharing this virtual experience, but they're doing it from a place of separation, of isolation, of making sense of what they are hearing, the, ultimately the spiritual message, but they're making sense of it through technology, through their minds. And ultimately, that requires relying on inner authority. And so I think that this is one of the most interesting dichotomies of the Aquarian energy, is that as much as it does have to do with this New Age understanding of inner authority, and you think about, um, as a historical force, the Age of Enlightenment, that was the discovery of Uranus. The Age of Enlightenment, when we in spiritual circles think of that word enlightenment, we think about Piscean things like the Buddha, like Nirvana. But the Age of Enlightenment was actually a time of divorcing matter from spirit, what's called the Descartian split, I think, therefore I am. This idea of hyper-scientism, of hyper-materialism, that what we see is just stuff, so we can do anything we want with it. Well, that is um, what the Age of Enlightenment actually brought the world that we have today and uh, how it is that we interact with the environment, how it is that we interact with animals. It has its roots in the Age of Enlightenment. Before the Age of Enlightenment, if you saw a flock of birds, it meant something. That ability to interpret what is happening in our external environment to our more personal experience that is called the symbolic mind, and that is something that astrology relies on. It relies on us viewing the sky from a symbolic mind. But up until the discovery of Uranus, you saw a flock of birds, it meant something. It spoke of something spiritual or personal. And then the discovery of Uranus and the Age of Enlightenment said it's all just stuff. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't have to mean anything spiritual. And so then that left a void, which led to the discovery of Neptune, which was uh, then the hyper-spiritualism of that time, and so on. And so I share this with you now because as Mars meets Saturn, this is going to be a harbinger of sorts. But here's the opportunity. Here's the amazing thing. We get to decide what it's going to mean. We get to decide what part of that age of Aquarius we are going to magnify because this is an energy that is so individualistic. It means the individual is strong. Our individual power is strong. And I believe, and as I affirm in my work, is that we can decide that our power is going to be rooted in love and wisdom. We can decide we are going to bring forward that part of the age of Aquarius that has to do with peace and unity and all those, 
those beautiful attributes. But a part of that may require healthy detachment. A part of that may require a healthy sense of oneself and of being with oneself. And so this sense of Mars and, and Saturn meeting, it is incredibly important to pay attention to because not only is it speaking to your own life and what the coming period of Saturn and Aquarius is going to be for you, but it can also empower you to decide if you like the way the energy is going. This can be a turning point for you. And it's a needed turning point. Whatever it is that happens for the collective, certainly, but also in our individual lives right around the very end of March and as we start April, we will see it differently uh, with a different nuance once Saturn retrogrades back over this, this very part of the sky in late June of 2020. But then the next big thing to happen, right? Uh, so far I've talked about, you know, how consequential it can be, how dire it can be. I get it, okay? But actually, the age of Aquarius could be really amazing. It can be really, really good. It holds freedom and equality and connection to others that doesn't necessarily rely on things like borders and where you physically are. And that can give us that much more uh, a sense of honoring one of the very basic needs we have as human beings, which is to know ourselves as connected to others. We know ourselves by seeing ourselves in others. We need representation, right? This is something that people talk about a lot in terms of, for example, media, how important a variety of media representation is. Because you know yourself when you see yourself. And we know ourselves when we have our tribe, when we know our people. It is going to be in mid-December that Saturn will move back into the sign of Aquarius. And it will be the winter solstice, the 21st or the 22nd, depending on where you are on the planet. Well, that is when not only will Saturn be here at the very beginning of the sign of Aquarius, but that is when Jupiter moves into the sign of Aquarius and these two planets meet. This is an incredibly important moment, not only for Saturn in the sign of Aquarius, but for humanity, for all of us. Now, I actually did a whole talk on what's called the Great Conjunction, and I presented this talk in uh, January in Florida and in New York City at the uh, New York Theosophical Society. And we spoke about the history of the Great Conjunction, as the ancients called it. And so the Great Conjunction is when Jupiter and Saturn meet in the sky. They meet every 20 years. Now, Kepler actually did a whole lot of work on this, what he called Trigon. And he made this connection between how these Great Conjunctions actually tend to stick in a certain element over a period of a couple of centuries. They tend to magnify that particular element. It's as if we as humanity focus in on manifesting as much as we can. And so it was during the, like from the mid 1500s right into the 1700s that we had some water, but mostly fire emphasized every 20 years with the Great Conjunction. And this was a time of discovery, right? This was the, the Americas, this was us going out and conquering the world and uh, the conquistadors feeling like they were, you know, spiritually inspired and blessed to, to conquer cultures and lands and convert them. This was fire and water merging together at this time. And it is Saturn and Jupiter meeting that denote turning points for humanity something beginning, a seed that ultimately changes the world. Uh, it was and has been for the better part of the last two centuries that most of these great conjunctions have taken place in earth signs. And so you think about what has happened over the last, you know, better part of the last 200 years. A lot of industry, right? 
this rise of, uh, we can say, capitalism. We can say um, this sense of people being empowered uh, materially, right? Buildings have gone up. This is all very earth-related. The physical things that we've manifested, the ways in which our structures around money have changed and power have changed. It was in 1981 that the energy started to change as the Great Conjunction, as it's called, took place in an air sign for the first time in centuries. And this was the energy of Libra. And throughout 1991, it was this Great Conjunction that perfected three times. And this denoted big changes for us in partnerships and relationships. But also you think about this as air energy. And air is communication, it is technology. And this is the mobile phone being invented at that time. And that has been a world changing force that we feel today with the smartphone. It started then with cellular technology that allowed us one-on-one -on -one to be able to communicate with others. It took what otherwise would have been fantasy and grounded it and made it real. The way that we understand relationships went through a change, a huge change. Divorce got a lot easier all over the world. We came to understand what we want in relationships differently. It was a powerful redefinition, but also in terms of gender roles. This is where it starts to become lived. Jupiter is a thought, a hope, an idea. It's out there. Right? It's, it's ephemeral, but it is hopeful. It is optimistic. But Saturn is grounded, and these two planets need each other because this is an opportunity to take what otherwise would just be a dream and actually manifest a different reality as a result of what otherwise would just stay a concept or idea. With all the gains and strides that were made, towards equality, gender equality, for example, because we're talking about the energy of Libra, which has to do with partnerships relating to others. As much as there were huge gains that were made, how do you actually live that? What does that look like when we are experiencing it in the world, in the work world, for example? This is where dynamics started to change on that front. And of course, diplomacy was indicated at this time as well. The relationships between countries started to be emphasized. The importance of good relationships, allies, started to be emphasized and went through a transformation. It began then. That was the beginning that brought forward a whole way and a whole different understanding of what diplomacy and allies and connections with others and relating to others, how that's going to be lived that started at that time. In the year 2000, the Great Conjunction occurred in the sign of Taurus. So what happened at that time? Well, that was the beginning of a brand new economy, a brand new way to do commerce, all very Taurian things, right? It took what otherwise was ephemeral, a dream, and it brought that Jupiterian energy to the ancient ruling planet of Aquarius, and it launched this whole e-commerce and online world, which fundamentally has changed how it is, not only that we do business, but also how it is that we understand money. It made money digital. And it is going to be these very concepts actually just outside of the Great Conjunction with Uranus right now in the sign of Taurus. Well, that is going to be, you know, really accelerating further. But I spoke about that in the Uranus in Taurus special horoscope that you can see on YouTube as well. So now we're here and it is going to be starting in 2020 at the winter solstice that the energy becomes air right to the end of the century and into the next it becomes that these great conjunctions that are going to take place will be happening in air signs. It starts with Aquarius now at the end of this year. And the next time that this great conjunction occurs in the energy of Aquarius will be 2080. So for many of us, this is going to be the only time in our lifetime that we will see this. But of course, the sky is different now. 
And what's different is that not only is it going to be Jupiter and Saturn meeting, but that Pluto is coming up. So let's come back to Jupiter and Saturn. This to me is showing us that actually the age of Aquarius can be really good. We can be connected and that there are whole new ways, ways that might not have even been invented yet for us to be connected to each other. And I was thinking about the, the fact that this great conjunction is going to be coming up. And right now where Mars is meeting Saturn, and it is about limitation and also elimination. It is Jupiter and Saturn that are about the new and the next and what's exciting and what could be and what we could hope for. Well, I actually think that the fact that we're being asked to be isolated, work online, be connected more through the internet, I think that in March, that's going to show its limitations. There may be some technology issues that pop up that need to be resolved, but ultimately it is necessary so that we can get to that place in December when the new technologies arise, new ways of us being independent and yet being interconnected start to show up for us brand new technologies, brand new modalities are going to start to show up for us. And because it is happening on a winter solstice, right? You think about the winter solstice, it's decidedly quiet. It's the darkest night, the longest night of the year. And it is from here that the sun is considered reborn. This is, you know, goes back to ancient mythologies. We see this again and again, the winter solstice associated with rebirth. And so that to me says that there is a rebirth happening at that time. And it'll be that much more rooted in consciousness. It'll be that much more rooted in ideas. You know, way, way back in the day when I was an undergrad, um, our core programs as part of my larger program um, was ideas that change the world. Ideas that change the world. So there was ideas that change the world 101, 102, all of that was in the first year of university. Then the second year it was 201, 202, right to the end, uh, right to the final fourth year. Um, and this was a recurring theme that we had to look at. These were core classes as part of, uh, of achieving the degree. And I always found it so fascinating, ideas that change the world. It really is ideas. What starts as an idea is the seed to a changed reality. And the fact that it is air, it is Aquarius that is being highlighted now, it is that much more about change, it is that much more about freedom, and is that much more about ideas themselves that bring change, that bring freedom. And so this is going to be a really big energy in our personal lives, what felt like a loss or what felt so uncertain, what felt like it was leaving, we will realize when we get there in December that it needed to end, it needed to leave, the closure needed to happen so that this new and next and exciting force could come rushing in. The beginning, the best of what Saturn in Aquarius is promising us individually and collectively that is going to show up before 2020 is even over. And then we enter 2021 and that is when Saturn is going to start connecting with Uranus. That's going to be really interesting for us. The ancient ruling planet of Aquarius and the modern ruling planet of Aquarius communicating. So consider this, we have this square uh, aspect to these conversations of tension. There is tension between the old and the new here. Anytime Saturn and Uranus square each other, that tension is indicated between the old and the new. But this is the old and the new in terms of ideas, the old and the new in terms of our connection between the individual and the collective, the older ways of understanding community are going to be shifting now. The older ways of using technology and the limitations there are now going to be asked to be transformed in favor of prosperity and new ways of going about doing prosperity. Now the ancients said that 
where it comes to a planet the further out a planet is, the slower moving a planet is, the more powerful it is. And so in that conversation between Saturn and Uranus, Uranus is going to win. The future will always win. Progress will always win. But here it is that we are going to see some challenge in ideas, some challenge in understanding what ideas are going to change the world, what are going to rule the world. And how is the world going to change now? How is it that more traditional ways are feeling threatened by that? But also, where is it now that we may be desiring to understand the collective differently, more expansively than we had before, and the collective will? February, June, and December are the peak moments of this larger energy, but just keep in mind that this energy is active throughout 2021. And this, to me, indicates some of the growing pains moving into the age of Aquarius. This is where we start to make sense of how that could be. And, you know, you think about what technologies... Any technology can be used in enlightened ways, in light ways, and in ways that empower and inspire, and in ways that are considered dark and restrictive and limited and overbearing. And that is the conflict we're going to see at this time. However, with Aquarius and Pluto going into Aquarius, there's really, um, it's an adjustment period, right? But there's no holding back on progress. As I spoke of in the Decade Ahead video, it is going to be once we get into 2026 that Uranus and Pluto are going to trine. And that is really when we're going to start to see the world change. That is going to be this whole new understanding of the information age becoming that much more pervasive. I feel like when we talk about the information age, we haven't even scratched the surface as to what that is going to look like and what that could be. It is going to be now in 2021 with Saturn moving through Aquarius that some of the fear around that is going to show up as some new ideas start to be presented. Well, what is this going to mean for not just financial structures? That's going to be a part of it. But what is this going to mean for humanity? What is this going to mean for the world, for individual rights? How is this going to fit in? So we're working that out. But it's a necessary part of the process. And in our own personal journeys, us as well, we are going to be looking at how is it that we can integrate these energies? How is it that we're being asked to sacrifice and take responsibility? Where it is that we could be more ourselves and where is it that it feels uncomfortable? How is that practically lived? Well, that is going to be about your own individual journey. But what I like to say and what I really believe is the love and wisdom are always the answer because that is whom it is we are. And so my hope, and especially with a the square, there tends to be work that is asked of us. We're tapping into a deeper motivation. And my hope, of course, is that we hold love and wisdom as the guiding principles, the higher principles, the principles that unite us, and the principles also that fuel our own understanding of ourselves as individuals. Because I think that'll be part of what helps us to navigate this time and use it as a lift as we move in a more empowered direction. What I love about this transit for us, well, whoa, we spoke about a whole lot of things, right? But I, of course, I'm going to say that beautiful, great conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter. I do think that that is not only the highlight point of this larger transit, but it is going to show us how it is that we actually can tap into this time and use it to make our lives better in practical ways. It is going to show us a more expansive vision and a new way of understanding. Where it is that in the beginning of the transit, we may see the limits of technology or the limits of interacting and independence. It is going to be new forms 
of being connected, new forms of technology that are going to begin as we get to the end of 2020. And we still have time left in that larger transit to have something to do with it, to be sure that we're working on it, to make the most of it, and to manifest a better lived experience. It is going to be as we get to that great conjunction that new ideas will start to be born. Ideas that have potential to change the world in truly meaningful ways, in ways that honor and acknowledge our inherent need for freedom and independence, and at the same time, the essential characteristic of what it means to be human, which is to be connected to each other. This can be truly beautiful and truly inspiring. When they say we're living in rare times and special times, take that to heart. Know that to be true and know that you in your life right now, you are a lived expression of that, of that change, of what is new and next. And that is part of the empowerment and the excitement of this time. Well, thank you so much for watching. Remember, I'll be here to talk about this every single week with superstars in the superstar space. You can get weekly videos uh, if you log on, exclusive expanded video scopes and unlimited access to special horoscopes as well. And all of that is in the superstar space at NadiaShaw.com. And also stay tuned because the special horoscope previews are coming up right now and they are also available for download on my website, nadiashaw.com. I hope you absolutely love them. And thank you. As I said, I will be here. I have been here for how long? <laughs> like since 2008, I've been on YouTube. Uh, since 2006, I've been a full-time astrologer. And I'm really looking forward to sharing all the incredible, exciting things that are coming up ahead. And whatever that new technology is, I will be on it, okay? I will find a way to tap into that as well and to share astrology because it really is such a special time. It's a great time to be alive. Our understanding, our technology, our appreciation of our personal power, it is growing exponentially. It is expanding just like us and our consciousness. It is a new consciousness that is coming forward now. And my hope is always to be part of a consciousness rooted in love and wisdom. I believe that with all my heart and all my energy as well. And energy, that is going to be really important coming up ahead as it is right now, today. Well, thank you again for watching. Stay tuned for the previews and it'll be a great transit. Enjoy. Hello, fabulous superstar Aries. Welcome to your Saturn special horoscope. Looking at Saturn moving into the sign of Aquarius for the better part of March 2020, right to March 2023. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing transit this is. It is going to be now and in the coming years that Saturn is going to encourage you to consider the people that you are aligned with, whether it is professionally or personally, where it is that you have friendships that represent whom it is you are and whom you want to be, and more importantly, which connections have served their purpose in your life. Along the way, truly big and rare opportunities are set to find you, and there are times when it isn't what you know, it's who you know, and that certainly is the case now and in the period ahead. But before we dive in more to look at what this particular transit is gonna mean for you, let's take a little bit of a step back. Now, wherever it is that Saturn goes, it represents a time that you are being asked to put in the time. Hello, fabulous superstar Taurus. Welcome to your Saturn special horoscope. Looking at Saturn moving through the sign of Aquarius for the better part of March 2020, right to March 2023. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing transit it is. It has been over the course of the last two and a half years before this transit begins that you have been more focused on putting things into place 
given where Saturn has been, securing credentials, getting the information you need and the vision that you need to manifest bigger and better in the fullness of time. Well, that time is now, that time has come. And this is a cycle of manifestation for you, whether that is career success or feeling like you are willing to do what you need to align with life purpose more fully. This is a time of gains, this is a time of rewards. Now, some of those rewards may be a little bit mixed, I have to say, and the reason I say that is because this transit does start off uh, with some need for adjustment, some need for... Hello, fabulous superstar Gemini. Welcome to your Saturn special horoscope. Looking at Saturn moving through the sign of Aquarius for the better part of the next three years, from March 2020 right to March 2023. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing transit this is. At first, it's just a taste. From late March right to July 1st, that is when you'll get a little bit of a taste of Saturn into a brand new part of your sky before he retrogrades back and then more fully moves into this brand new part of the sky in December of 2020 for a much longer stay. Now this is where your world expands in practical and in real ways. Now, whether it is your perception of the world and your mind, your philosophical beliefs, even your religious and spiritual beliefs, go through some important questionings. And in some cases it could be quite dramatic, but for others still, this is going to be a time where some of the most important lessons you're going to learn are going to come Hello, fabulous superstar Cancer. Welcome to your Saturn special horoscope. Looking at Saturn moving through the sign of Aquarius for the better part of March 2020, right to March 2023. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing time this is. What an amazing cycle this is. It is going to be over the coming three years that you will get a chance to truly delve into your own psyche and your own power. Understand more deeply what stays and what goes and where it is that you are ready to work towards the transformation that ultimately gives you yourself. Along the way, you're gonna learn a lot, not just in terms of what's happening in your psychology, but also what's happening in terms of your money, in terms of your wealth. And this is the part of the sky that connects to the alchemical process, turning lead into gold. And in some way, you are going to take what has felt so burdensome before and turn it into part of your great riches. Now, that is not hello fabulous superstar leo welcome to your saturn special horoscope looking at saturn moving through the sign of aquarius for the better part of march 2020 right to march 2023 i am your astrologer nadia shaw thank you for being here what an amazing transit this is with saturn first moving in and then out and then more permanently into your opposite sign this is all about getting more honest about your partnerships, where you are with other people and why. And for a lot of Leos out there, this is gonna play out in the context of love. I do think that when you look back at the larger trajectory of your life, and I don't say this lightly, it will end up being that this was the time that was most important in how it is that love and attraction and connections with others well, they taught you some of the most valuable lessons that you will take forward with you that will continue to shape you well after this transit is over. But more importantly, it's just the beginning. It is really just the beginning. Hello, fabulous superstar Virgo. Welcome to your Saturn special horoscope. Looking at Saturn, moving to the sign of Aquarius and what that means for you for the better part of March 2020, right to March 2023. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing transit this is. This is Saturn coming home. Now, I'm not talking about your home per se, like where you live, but rather each sign has a corresponding area of life, a house as we call it in astrology. And your corresponding area of life is the day-to-day. -day. It has to do with recognizing the specialness and the sacredness of being in the moment. It is there that we develop mastery. 
It is there that we are able to find ourselves and be most of service. This is an idea, a concept that you are here to learn, to fully explore that much more as part of your life path. And it is Saturn now that is going to align you with this very path in powerful ways now and in the period. Hello, fabulous superstar Libra. Welcome to your Saturn special horoscope. Looking at Saturn, moving through the sign of Aquarius for the better part of March, 2020 right to march 2023 i am your astrologer nadia shaw thank you for being here what an amazing transit it is it has been saturn moving through the very foundation of your chart since late 2017 well now as we move into march on the 22nd of march Saturn will move into a part of the sky that has to do with the fun and flirtation and romance and creativity. Now imagine Saturn, well, it brings structure certainly, but it's also quite a serious energy. How does that fit into enjoying your life? Well, that is gonna be part of what you decide to navigate moving forward from here, getting serious about your creative energy, about your creative output getting more serious about the love that you want to cultivate in your life and in every area of life. And yes, getting more. Hello, fabulous superstar Scorpio. Welcome to your Saturn special horoscope, looking at Saturn moving through the sign of Aquarius and what it means for you for the better part of March, 2020, right to March, 2023. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing transit it is. I do believe that this part of the sky that Saturn is moving into is one of the most important and powerful parts of the sky. It is deeply private. It is about the things that you work on in your own time and space that you will build on for years going forward from here. In fact, it is what you do now that will reap more and more fully in the years to come and in 14 years time, that is when great success becomes possible to you. And when you reflect back, you'll realize it was now during this transit that the foundation was laid, that you put things into place to make it possible. Very often it is when Saturn moves into the very foundation. Hello, fabulous superstar Sagittarius. Welcome to your Saturn special horoscope. Looking at Saturn, moving through the sign of Aquarius and what that means for you for the better part of March, 2020, right to March, 2023. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. You know, as part of the larger trend of Saturn moving through Aquarius, I've been meditating on this idea that our thoughts are the only place where we are truly free. Now, this is something I'll flesh out more when we get to the overview, so be sure to watch that. But having said that, it is Saturn now that is going to move into a part of the sky for you that has to do with your thoughts, their power, their ability. And whether it is that you start to consider new ways to think of things, you start to work on your own cognitive behaviors and abilities, or whether it is that you just start to feel like you have a lot more to say and a lot more to communicate, well, all of this becomes areas that you start working on for your betterment and for your happiness in the period ahead. Hello, fabulous superstar Capricorn. Welcome to your Saturn special horoscope. Looking at Saturn moving out of your sign and into the sign of Aquarius for the better part of March 2020, right to March 2023. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, it isn't just about the fact that Saturn is going to change signs and move into a part of the sky for you that has to do with what you value, what you possess. It has to do with self-esteem and self-worth, and also it has to do with money, the money you earn, the money you spend, and encouraging you to get serious on all these matters. But I would say it is probably more about the fact that Saturn is leaving your sign. That is a really big deal. That is gonna be one of the things that shifts your energy, that you are going to feel most immediately. Even though Saturn is at home in your sign and has brought with it a sense of structure, 
It can also be a time where it feels as if there is a hello fabulous superstar Aquarius welcome to your Saturn special horoscope looking at Saturn moving through your sign for the better part of the next three years from March 2020 right to March 2023 I am your astrologer Nadia Shaw thank you for being here what an amazing transit it is your ancient ruling planet is coming home to your sign and this is going to awaken a sense of stability self-respect and success this transit comes along once every 28 and a half years and when it does it can for some people suggest a time of some restriction but it is ultimately a healthy restriction about owning your happiness that is the highest way of understanding Saturn to understand that you alone are responsible for your happiness and for your peace Saturn will encourage you to understand what it means to not only be yourself, but to embody it fully, to live it. And in this way, this can end up being one of the more rewarding. Hello, fabulous superstar Pisces. Welcome to your Saturn special horoscope. Looking at Saturn, moving through the sign of Aquarius and what it means for you for the better part of the next three years, March 2020, right to March 2023. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here what an amazing transit it is saturn will move through a part of the sky for you that is of special interest having to do with what's happening on levels of soul of psyche and spirit this is a mystical part of the sky it can also be an obsessive part of the sky but this is a deeply important one it has to do with creating space for the new and the next to find you which does once saturn moves into your sign in 2023 this is a necessary part of the larger saturnian cycle this is where you get to understand what stays and what goes and where it is that